So far, we've learned what it means to perform transformations in our two-dimensional coordinate space. Let's take this into three dimensions now and examine the matrices for uh, scaling and rotation. We'll look at that one in just a second. So first off here with scaling, we're going to find that uh, a, a, a scaling uh, transformation will always be represented with the following matrix. So what we have here is a three by three matrix with uh, scaling factors defined along this diagonal here, right? So we can, can scale a certain amount in the X axis, the Y axis, and the Z axis. Now by multiplying this matrix by some vector, which represents some point in space, we can end up with the transformed version of that vector, or uh, x prime, y prime, and z prime, right? Just each of those components transformed according to this matrix. Again, nothing has changed here. This still follows the same intuition we've been working with thus far. This matrix and, and the values that will be written in here for uh, the, the scaling factor of x, y, and z respectively indicate where in the new transformed coordinate system the basis vectors for uh, x, y, and z, where those vectors land. And in fact, let's go back to where we, uh, where we were kind of trying to visualize, you know, what, what the scaling operation was actually doing here back in the uh, matrices and transformations video. Let's actually go back to that drawing that we had here. Now let's take a look at the matrix we obtained to do this kind of scale by two operation, right? So, so yeah, let, let's take a look at that, right? We, we saw that, we saw that I and J, uh, well, they were, they were kind of doubled in magnitude, right? And they, they landed at the coordinates, right? Two zero for I and uh, zero two for J. Now let's take a look at this. Okay, sure. It's, it's only a two dimensional transformation here, but whatever we learn in two dimensions can easily be applied to three dimensions. Let's take a look at why, like where in the matrix these values appear. Well, sure enough, it's along that diagonal. Right, let's take a look at this, right? There is the scaling factor for X and there is the scaling factor for Y. They appear along this diagonal here, right? If this was a, a, a three by three matrix and we had a Z component as well, we could uh, throw a scaling factor in there for Z. We also saw that uh, when we calculated this final value here, we, well, we did this linear combination, right? using the coordinates of the old vector and you know multiplying in the new basis vectors but really what we were doing here was well multiplying the the x coordinate with all of the associated x values and multiplying the y coordinate with all the associated y values and then just summing across the rows here right Do, doing that that vector addition to end up with the final result well, hey, uh, that sounds that sounds an awful lot like uh, matrix multiplication, doesn't it? Where we would we would end up multiplying multiplying the each co coordinate with its you know the, the 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 coordinates associated with it, and then well summing across the rows. Again, let's pull up yeah let let's pull up that other matrix multiplication uh, that we did in the matrix in, in the matrix operations video right we were multiplying the associated coordinates here and then summing the results so it turns out what we were doing back here with this linear combination was in fact matrix multiplication between this old vector this old vector and this matrix representing of course, where the basis vectors land in the new coordinate space. All right, so uh, hopefully, hopefully that ties together what we've been talking about so far with uh, uh, matrices and matrix multiplication. And uh, we can see here 
that uh, at least when doing when doing linear transformations, right, with with scaling and rotation, um, that it, there there's nothing has changed. We're we're really just accomplishing that same linear combination just using matrix multiplication. Now for rotation, uh, we have a bit of a different situation going on, uh, just because we do need a different formula depending on which axis we are rotating around. But if we take a look a bit closer at uh, one of these formulas, it's actually not that bad. Um, we can see here that uh, basically when rotating around a particular axis, uh, we don't, all right, we don't, again, if we consider these values to be related to the x-axis, we actually don't change anything for the axis that we are rotating around. Instead, we use cosines and sines of the angle that we're working with to change kind of this square shape of matrix elements uh, involving the other two axes. So for a rotation around x, we would use this formula. For rotation around y, it's a bit different. Of course, the, nothing changes on the y-axis. We change kind of this, uh, this set of, uh, of values here, kind of surrounding the y component. And for the z-axis, we, uh, we, we leave the z-axis unchanged and change these components, all right? And, and this should make sense, um, especially once we relate this back to the previous example we worked out using the linear combination uh, for, for doing a rotation uh, back in the uh, matrices and transformations video. So let's actually, let's actually keep this formula in mind and just head back to that, uh, to, to that, uh, that drawing that we did to uh, relate the two together. So if we take a look, if we take a look at that drawing that we did back in the matrices and transformations video, we can see that in order to do this counterclockwise 90 degree rotation, we obtained a new set of basis vectors, right? Where I pointed, well, it was pointing up on the y-axis, right? So, so its coordinates was zero and one, and the j basis vector, well, it was pointing negative one on the x-axis and zero on the y. All right, so, well, hey, does this, does this layout of uh, coordinates look familiar? What if, what if I drew it out this way? What if we pretended this was a uh, three-dimensional ve uh, uh, vector? What if, the, what if these were three-dimensional vectors in a three-by-three three matrix? All right, so uh, we, we could consider this, this transformation as occurring in three dimensions just by you know, imagining we were looking directly down along the z-axis, kind of looking at the x, y plane here. And we can see, well, hey, look at that. Look at that cluster of coordinates there. Uh, th this kind of square shape. I mean, that looks real similar to what we have going on here, right? We have this kind of this cluster of co coordinates right up here with the z-axis unchanged. Let's actually, let's actually relate these two and just see that it was precisely the same thing going on here back when we did this linear combination. All right, so, well, what was the angle? What was the angle that we were working with here? Well, it was, it was equal to 90 degrees, right? It was a 90 degree rotation. So, well, let's, uh, let's just... We should probably, let's here, let's copy this and uh, put it beside, put it beside uh, this, uh, this other matrix that we're comparing it to. Let's put it right here. All right, so, well, what's the cosine of, uh, of 90 degrees? Well, that's, uh, that's zero, right? What is, what is the sine of, uh, uh, of 90 degrees? Well, that's, that's one. What is the negative sign of 90 degrees? Well, negative one. And we already know that the cosine of 90 is, is zero, right? So there it is. This, this is precisely the same transformation matrix we obtained 
just when considering you know what the basis vectors were doing uh, during this counterclockwise 90 degree rotation all right so I, I just wanted to again make that connection just to show that um, even when doing this linear combination here again uh, we, we, we're accomplishing the same thing as matrix vector multiplication. And of course, we were multiplying by this matrix, which was describing the transformation that we were creating. Now, one thing to note before we move on here is that these rotation formulas or these rotation matrices only apply to the right-handed coordinate system the right hand system and uh, just because of uh, how uh, how this works uh, in, in the left-handed system you will find actually that in the left-handed system we will start off with row vectors for our x y and z coordinates and uh, the, there's a number of things that has to happen here right just due to the rules of matrix multiplication, right? We know the number of columns has to equal the number of rows of a matrix, right? So the, the, uh, the, the, the vector will have to come first in this case uh, in, in the multiplication. And then we'll also be using a transposed version of the uh, rotation matrix. So again, for maybe for this, for this X rotation, maybe for the X rotation, um, we would have to use uh, a transposed version of that rotation matrix. So these elements on the diagonal will remain unchanged. However, we're gonna see that the sine theta and negative sine theta do trade places just because of the transposition. All right, so do keep that in mind if working in the left-handed system. We will be working with row vectors for individual uh, uh, vectors or, or points in space, and uh, the transposed version of the transformation matrices, um, just because uh, just, just because of the, the order that we have to do this matrix multiplication in, in order to get the same results. All right, and uh, last but not least here, translation. Uh, perhaps we, we might think of this as the black sheep of the transformation family. It uh, has to go and be all different on us and be completely different than uh, rotation and scaling. What we're doing here is not a multiplication operation. What we're doing is taking some vector and just performing a vector addition by some change in X, change in Y, and change in Z, right? So that, that's all that's happening with a translation transformation, right? It, it is not a linear transformation. Uh, it is a simple uh, vector addition. So the, the final thing that we need to cover in, in order to kind of uh, make sense of transformations as a whole and come up with one way of working with any kind of transformation, uh, at least as it pertains to the, the common transformations in 3D graphics. The last step we need to do here is figure out a way to reconcile translation to rotation and scaling. And that's what we're going to do in the next video on homogeneous transformations.